are ready. Brandon, what did you think? You guys came out hot, got some uh, got some points on the board, and really took Miami out of it. Yeah, it was really good, man. We've been talking, you know, all year long, but all week long, especially just, man, really coming out strong. Um, you know, and, and uh, getting those first couple drives, getting some points, and obviously you're always looking for that, but um, I was proud of them, man. They, they, they did a much better job this week, especially of execution, um, and uh, kind of the name of the game for us offensively most of the year um, has been long drives. We got a lot of long drives, and that's hard to do. Um, it gives our defense some time to, to rest, though, and it, it was good to see that. And I think the time of possession was pretty lopsided, which was, was really, really good to see. Because DJ obviously ran the ball a lot more last week and got a point so he rushed for this week. I mean, how much do you think it's his confidence for what we do? I think it really does. I mean, I think he's uh, he's done a great job of uh, being a physical runner. Um, and, and he did a lot better job even today than he did last week as far as making some of the reads that he needed to make. Um, a lot of the time that he's running the ball, it is a read, whether it's a, a handoff or a pitch to a running back um, or a run for him. And so he did a lot, a lot of good things. I think he made all of his reads uh, correct tonight. Um, and uh, he's just a willing runner, and, and that's that's very, very um, good to see and, and good to have as an offense so that everybody can't just hone in on the running back. Brandon, well, did you feel like y'all were moving the ball that when you when you stopped moving it was because you hurt yourselves? Yeah, it really was. I mean, you know, you look at the, the first half was a pretty dominating first half. You know, we had, a, I think we had maybe two, three and outs in the first half, which we got to eliminate those. I mean, uh, we got to at least, you know, move the ball down the field a little bit uh, for field position purposes. But, um, and then, you know, in the past, we've been doing really good coming out from halftime and, and getting some points on the board. And we just, we, uh, we really struggled in the third quarter. Most of the time it was turnovers, you know, right now. We just got that bug right now a little bit. And, and I just told the guys, man, the only way you can overcome that is to hold yourself accountable, all right? And then keep playing, keep playing. Don't overthink it. Um, but yeah, that's we, too many turnovers, you know? And that stopped our uh, some of that momentum, especially going into that second half. How nice was it to get the touchdown for Luke Price? Oh that. man, Luke Price. Um, man, I told him earlier in the year, I said, we got to find a way to get you in the end zone. He's, he's worked so hard for so many years i think this is his 12th year here i don't even know i mean it's i mean this is this is number six for him but just getting him in the end zone was such an awesome deal and and uh so proud of him for you know everything that he does for this program and has done for this program i mean he really resembles the the grit the toughness uh the dedication um the all-in commitment that we talk about Brandon, and, uh, do you Friday. think some, some of the turnover issues are, are mental at this point? Guys going out there thinking about it? Yeah, I, I really don't think so. I really don't. I think I think it's more of just being accountable for, for doing the little fundamental things, you know? And, and to be honest with you, turnovers are luck sometimes. Yeah. Not all the times. But, I mean, when a guy hits the helmet right on the ball, I mean, that's hard. That's hard. But we got to get better at it um, and, and continue to coach it up and continue to hold them accountable, and we will. And like I said, I mean, just keep playing. That's the way you get it, get out of it. You just keep playing, you know, uh, and have a, um, you know, next play mentality. Outside of the turnovers, anything Miami did, you know, as far as adjustments as I can have to kind of throw you guys off? You know, really not, really didn't. I mean, they they kind of played with their their core deal, what they've been showing on film, and um, and like I said, just the, the turnovers and then a few other drives. We missed a couple plays that we should have made. Um, that's really what stopped us. Coach, uh, eight catches today about the tight ends. Was there just openings that you saw, or was that an emphasis in the, the game plan coming in, or just good matchups today? Or? Yeah, I think it was a mixture, you know, a mixture of some, some matchups, but also, man, just getting them involved. We're very talented in the tight end room. And, uh, and then and, and they made plays for us, and, and they continue to make plays. And, um, and so you know, that's just going to continue to happen giving them opportunities to make plays. And so it was really good to see them do that. And then we had, I think I heard we had 12 different people or 12 different receivers uh, catch the ball. And uh, that, that's that's pretty impressive. And uh, just being able to spread the ball around a good bit. Would you like to see more of a, a killer instinct in the second half of the game? Did you start so well? Yeah. It just seems like there's a lull. There's a lull. Yeah, there was, a, there was a lull for sure this week. Um, like I said, usually in the third quarter, we've been coming out 
and, 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 uh, and, and getting some points, but we didn't do that in the third quarter today. Um, so, you know, that's going to be an emphasis of, man, coming back from, from halftime and, and really putting teams away earlier in the game and not letting teams hang around. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that'll be, a, again, another big, big point of emphasis for us. I know you weren't necessarily in the huddle, but do you know kind of what led to Dabo huddling up the offense there and, and what his message was? You know, I, I think uh, what I heard he was saying was, man, we – He's just trying to gather the troops and just say, hey, we got it all there. It's just finishing on some plays, um, you know, not turning the ball over. That's the only thing that was stopping us in that third quarter, at least. And, uh, and we just got to overcome that, you know. We got to overcome it and just want to see guys respond. And, uh, and fortunately, we've been able to respond every, every, you know, for the most part, every week in a lot of different ways. And so um, and they, they responded right after that huddle, I believe. We went down and scored. Got the ball back and went and scored again, you know. And so just being able to respond earlier um, is, is going to be big for us to, to continue to, um, you know, be dominant. Were there some wrinkles y'all put in this week that, that you thought helped? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're always, number one, you're looking for matchups and looking for matchups um, where, you know, you can get some of the top guys the ball. And, uh, and we were able to do that tonight. Um, you know, everybody wants the ball. We got a lot of good players. There's no doubt about it. We got a lot of good players. Um, and we knew they're, they're, they're daggone good defense. I mean, they got a good defensive front. Uh, they did a good job um, somewhat in the run game um, with our running backs and stuff in the running backs somewhat. You know, we weren't quite as efficient there. So we had to, you know, we had to manufacture other ways to do that. And, and that's where DJ stepped up. And I think he had 16 or 17 carries. And so, to be an equalizer at quarterback <clears throat> was a big thing, and we saw that. And we knew that was going to have to happen for us to be really successful to run the ball um, against these guys. Brandon, particularly in the first half, like you guys utilized the middle of the field more in the passing game. Was that opponent-specific, or is that mm -hmm. something you want to try to yeah, do? Yeah, I think it's a mixture because I think, um, you know, anytime you – you know, we have a lot of uh, – we have a lot of plays that – are complimentary plays, you know, if we're running the ball outside, if we're pitching it outside, if we're moving the back on a, um, a motion to the outside, we got to have complimentary plays. And so we were able to do that a little bit with some play action tonight. And uh, we knew that they were going to play a lot of one high structure, which means a lot of times, you know, the, the seams are open. And so I know DJ, I think, missed one to Davis Allen early in the game. Um, and we came back to it um, and hit him later on in the game. Uh, and then I think that's when he fumbled uh, and then came back to another one and hit Brenny, uh, uh, Jake Brenning's stool down the middle. So, so yes, we're trying to take advantage of some of their one high stuff and also uh, complement the play, plays that we do a lot too. I know you talked last week about needing to protect the screen game. So was that kind of the play to Brenning stool where, where you did it over the middle? Just how good did you see that, that play? Yeah, I think it was like yeah, it really was. I mean, it was really good because he, he, they came open a couple times throughout the game and uh, just be able to finally make that play um, in the passing game and make an explosive play there was was, was really good and, and off those screens, especially those outside screens, you know, we got to be able to do that in order to uh, keep people from, uh, you know, doing certain things and stopping those screens. Coach, Cole Turner came in, had a nice third yeah. down conversion. I know you've been redshirting him this year, but how, is he at a point where he can help you, especially with, with Bo out these last few games? Absolutely. Cole Turner has been very, very good. And uh, he's been practicing with us the whole year. Um, and he is, a, honestly, he's one of the most consistent guys we have. Um, I mean, we throw the ball up to him. He's making plays left and right. So it didn't surprise me one bit that, number one, DJ went to him. And number two, that he made the play. And uh, like you said, you know, trying to redshirt, we still, you know, we, we did the right thing. We were able to hold him for as long as we needed to. Um, and uh, man, he's going to be able to help us down the stretch. And uh, in the future as well, he is—he's got ice in his veins. He can run fast, unbelievable, dependent hands. Um, so really, really excited. I think it was the first play of him going in, and that was a—it was a third down conversion. So um, really good to see him in there. Coach, so, you gotta be really proud of uh, another week, back-to-back -back weeks, of confidence and composure, just able to finish strong. You know, kind of struggled out of the gate in the second half, but able to get those back-to-back -back scores by shifting the pace. Gotta be. Kind of a high mark for the end of the day. Yeah, very excited. You know, let me let me talk about Kobe Pace real quick. I think Kobe uh, did an awesome job of man. He's been on the shelf for about 
what, five or six five, weeks? Yeah. You know, had some surgery. That's hard to do to come back and make some of the plays that he made tonight. Um, I mean, he bailed DJ out on the one um, down, down in the red zone. It was a low throw. We ran a little angle route with him, and uh, he made a great catch. Um, and then he made some really big runs. It was good to see him. He got in the end zone, I think, right? So it was good to see him get in the end zone, too. And, um, and, and I know we've been talking about Shipley and Mafa and how, how you know dependent we are on them, but, man, this kid, Kobe Pace, has done nothing but answer the call every time. And it was good to see him come back and, uh, and do that tonight. And, uh, you know, just, just proud of the guys for, again, responding in a lot of different ways. I mean, that's what it's about, responding and, and, and keep playing, keep playing. How do you think the offensive line played in the predicting Yeah, I think um, I have to look at the film. I mean, there was a couple times he got a little bit of pressure a little bit too quick, and then there was a couple times where DJ should have gotten rid of the ball a little bit faster. <laughs> I think one time it was two man, and uh, and that's an opportunity for a quarterback to, to tuck it and run it if they're playing two man and there's really nobody in the box. Uh, we just got to get through that first line of defense and you can make some big plays. He did make a couple of those runs on third down. You saw um, that was a two man situation, and uh, and so he did do a good job of that at times. But early in the game, he took a sack. He should have got rid of the ball. Um, and then the fumble, you know, he it was it was it was somewhat of a quick game. It was a mixture between quick game and drop back. He held the ball a little bit too long. I think we got beat on the edge a little bit as well. Um, so I'll have to watch the tape to see the details of it. But I think it was a mixture. How have they been? I guess past like Miami on the What did you kind of see them like? Give y'all some issues, or did y'all feel like they maybe? Only yeah, we knew they had. I mean, we knew their defensive line was a. They were strong, you know, they were strong. Uh, um, <clears throat> we didn't feel like, you know, it was an elite pass rush, but we felt like they were good enough to, to cause issues. And they had some stout guys that were playing really, really well. Um, so we knew it was gonna be a challenge. And, uh, and they didn't pressure much. They don't. They haven't shown pressure much at all. Um, and uh, they tried to keep it really, really simple, just like they showed us on film. So the challenge for us was gonna be, hey, can we be consistent enough all right, and march down the field and make some of those plays and and and, uh, and find a way to get some points. It's been the last couple of weeks. DJ's had a tendency to strip sack fumbles have happened. Yeah. Is he is that situation where he's just maybe hanging on to it a little bit too long? Yeah, um, yeah. I think both times you talk about last week too. Yep. Um, last week was more of a fundamental deal. He didn't have his second hand on the ball. His front hand uh, should have been on the ball, and that helps protect it a lot more. Um, and then this week. He held on to the ball a little bit too long. It was a quicker type of a throw. They ran a certain coverage that didn't get a guy open for us, but he still should have let it go. And um, and uh, yeah, he waited too long. For you personally, you uh, played in the next week's game as a quarterback. Yeah. How long does it take you to get the juices going? Because this is a little bit different for you, I would imagine. Well, uh, the juices are going already <laughs> for next week. I mean, I can promise you. I mean. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a, a awesome, uh, awesome, awesome time, especially here in the valley. Um, and so uh, we've already talked to our guys about it after the after this game here, and, and uh, congratulated them obviously. But man, it's on to the next one, and uh, we all know how big this rivalry is. Um, and they've played some good football um, throughout the season, and um, so now it's time for us to man answer the call and continue to build off of some of the momentum that we've had the last couple weeks and um, and, then, and then for me man it's it's exciting I mean as a player it doesn't get any better than that especially when you get to play at home uh, in front of this home crowd for the last game of the season um, it doesn't get any better what's been some of your uh, fondest memories for you personally uh, as a player and as a coach against them yeah oh yeah um, well <clears throat> I remember uh, well I only got to play against them one time that I was the starter. Okay, so I was. It was my junior year. It was a. We did not have a good record. They did not have a good record. We played them in the valley, and we ended up beating them. And uh, and and it really, for the last the last game of the regular season, I mean, it just makes you feel unbelievable, just because you get to have bragging rights for the rest of the year. And then uh, the next year, I was actually hurt because um, I broke my collarbone, so I didn't get to play against them the second time. Um, but. It's just a great rivalry, and, it, and it's just it's what college football is about. These rivalry games, I mean, it's what college football is about. 
and uh, and, and it's about the team that, that can go execute and um, and uh, really um, you know the most united team and the team that responds because the emotions are going to be at its height, but that's not what wins games. The execution wins games, and so that's what we're going to have to do next week. Take one more for Coach Street if anybody's got one. Nope. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.